Hello guys. In this lecture, we will be discussing about centric relation and centric occlusion. Mandible and cranium, their relationship is quite unique and no other bone in our body, it has this kind of relationship. Mandible is attached to the skull with the help of ligaments and it is suspended in a muscular sling. Elevator muscles like the masseter, medial pterygoid and temporalis muscles, these are the three muscles out of, like three sets of muscles we must say, out of the four sets of muscles which we call the muscles of mastication and these are the elevator muscles. Well, why we call those elevator muscles? Because they raise the mandible. While the mandible is raised, contact is made and force is applied to the skull in three areas. Which three areas? Both the condyles and the dentition. So, these forces which are being dissipated upon closure of the mandible, these forces are quite high and there would be a potential for damage to these structures. We require a stable joint position for any treatment, for any diagnosis. So that stable joint position for the ages we are using this term centric relation and we want this uh, joint or this position where like there is not going to be any change occur even if patient loses their teeth or even if they age. Well, Ideally, there must not be any shift from centric relation to centric occlusion. But unfortunately, in majority of the population, we have this centric relation to centric occlusion shift is present. It could be anteroposteriorly or it could be laterally or sidewise. Like in this case, we can see that teeth are now coming in contact and midlines are coincident. But if we look at the cusps of upper teeth and the cusps of lower teeth, well, they are going to have uh, some premature contact and it is not going to be a real cusp fossa type of relationship. Nature has designed our jaws in such a way or our arches in such a way that the upper arch should be overlapping the lower arch no matter in the posterior region or in the anterior region. But in this case, it seems it's not going to happen. In order to attain the maximum intercuspation, mandible is going to shift on one side and there will be a shift in the midline one side appears normal, but on the other side, we will see a cross white. Centric relation, the term, as I told you that this term is in use for ages in dentistry, both in uh, prosthodontics as well as in occlusion and even in uh, orthodontics. This term is generally designated to the position of the mandible when the condyles are in an orthopedically stable position. Previously, we were de uh, defining this term as the most retruded position of the condyles. But today, we know that that was not correct and the definition of the term centric relation, it has changed. The direction of the force placed on the condyles by the masseters and medial pterygoids, it is actually superoanteriorly. Superoanteriorly. Well, the temporal muscles, they also apply a force, but it is slightly posterior. 
But if we look at the anatomy, it will be actually stabilizing that superoanterior position. Well, we know that the lateral pterygoids, they are the depressor muscles or they help in the opening of the jaw. But we also know that lateral pterygoids, it has two heads, the inferior and the superior heads. Well, somehow the inferior lateral pterygoid, it also make a contribution in attaining this stable position when upper and lower jaws, they come in contact or they come close to each other. The most orthopedically stable joint position as dictated by the muscles occurs when the condyles are in their most superoanterior position in the glenoid fossae, fully seated and resting against the posterior slopes of the articular eminence. So articular eminence, it is just close to it. This is the glenoid fossa. This is the articular eminence. Centric relation is described as the relationship between maxillary and mandibular skeletal bases independent of the teeth. It is reproducible with or without teeth present. It can be described anatomically, conceptually, as well as geometrically. So if we look into the description anatomically, it is the position of the mandible to the maxilla with the intraarticular disc in place when the head of the condyle is against the most superior part of the distal facing incline of the clenoid fossa. That is the articular eminence. Conceptually, centric relation is described as the position of the mandible in relation to the maxilla with the articular disc in place and the muscles of mastication are at their most relaxed and least strained position. This definition supports the concept of a qualitative relationship between a jaw position and another element of the articulatory system. The other element is muscles. Geometrically, the position of the mandible relative to the maxilla with the intraarticular disc in place when the head of the condyle is at the terminal hinge axis position. There are certain important points related to the centric relation. In this picture, we can see the edentulous mandible is there, or even edentulous jaws are there. And even at that time, the centric relation could be easily uh, achieved. And we can record it, the position. Centric relation is a fixed axial position of the condyles, but it does not mean that the mandible is restricted to the centric relation during the function. The rotating condyles are free to move down and up the eminence to and from centric relation, permitting the jaw to open or close at any position from the centric relation to the most protruded position. Centric relation should not be confused with centric occlusion, the other name for centric occlusion or the right term should be maximum intercuspation or intercuspal position. Centric relation refers to the fully seated condylar position regardless of how the teeth fit. Centric relation is not about the teeth, rather it is about the position of the condyles in the glenoid fossa with the articular disc. They are properly seated. The position of the condyles determines the relationship of the mandible to the maxilla even when no teeth are present. The edentulous mandible will be in centric relation if the condyle disc assemblies are completely seated. Centric relation is not only repeatable but also the it is the universally accepted jaw position because it is physiologically and biomechanically correct and is the only job position that permits an interference-free occlusion. Centric occlusion, if there are interferences, then mandible is going to be deflected. Postural jaw position, another term which we use. It is the position of the jaw when an individual is sitting or is standing upright and they are relaxed as well as they are alert. At this time, the height of the lower face in this position is the vertical dimension at rest or we also call it VDR or another term is 
the rest vertical dimension or RVD. Centric occlusion. It is kind of an obsolete term. Now we use the term intercuspal position or intercuspation position or maximum intercuspation. So it can be described as the occlusion when a person brings their teeth together in maximum intercuspation. Other names, as I told you, we also call a bite of convenience or habitual bite. It is the occlusion the person makes on being told to bite. When you ask your patient sitting in the dental chair to close their jaw, so that is the position they would be closing when they are dented. To avoid confusion with centric relation and other definitions of centric occlusion, we now use the term intercuspation position instead of centric occlusion. The distance between the two selected points, one related to the maxilla and one related to the mandible when the upper and lower teeth are in the intercuspal position, we call it occlusal vertical dimension. Occlusal vertical dimension. And when the mandible is in the resting position, this distance is the rest vertical dimension which I have already mentioned. There is a difference between the rest vertical dimension and the occlusal vertical dimension. And that difference is known as the freeway space. Well, as I told you that most of the population, they have a shift from the centric relation to the centric occlusion or to the maximum intercuspation. So if we look at the post cells uh, envelope, we will find this line over here. Ideally, there must not be any shift and this position one and position two, they should be overlapping means at the centric relation, person would be closing the jaw without any interference. Hence, there won't be any shift. So an occlusal relationship where teeth are not interfering the muscle produced and condyle controlled movements where the centric relation would be at and the centric occlusion they would be coinciding only the teeth would be going into the maximum intercuspation there won't be any position to in the post-cells envelope when we design the occlusion especially if there is a long span removable partial denture or if there is a complete denture so our uh, Goal is that we will be providing person the uh, centric occlusion or the maximum intercuspation without any interference. So it will be a new uh, occlusion for them. Dental occlusion should be designed so as not to conflict with the muscle produced and condylar controlled cyclic actions. This requirement and the purpose of occluding teeth to provide a stable closure of mandible in centric relation are major considerations in an occlusal scheme that promotes health of supporting tissues, has a reasonable degree of permanence and provides efficient comfortable group uses of teeth. It is the centric relation, not the centric occlusion, which is considered as the treatment position. So hopefully you enjoyed this lecture and I have tried to explain these two terms, the centric relation and centric occlusion. Well, if you have any queries, you can always contact me or if you want some more explanation on these topics, I can make some more elaborated lectures on this topic at the moment i am trying to bring some uh, lectures to you on the topic of occlusion so hopefully you will be enjoying those lectures as well thank you